Good evening, all, and welcome to this uh, first lecture in uh, this year's Going Public series at the Faculty of Architecture of the KU Leeuwen campus in Lucas, Brussels, and Ghent. Good evening, Home from Theta Architects. Welcome that you have uh, taken the time to join us today for this lecture, knowing that you have an incredibly busy schedule um, this week, but also coming weeks and coming days. This Going Public lecture series is part of a series of events, lectures, workshops and debates that are organized at the Faculty of Architecture. And they are in, they have the intention or the ambition to create a kind of community of students, learners, practitioners, architects, and other guests. The Going Public series lectures brings together these events from different perspectives. And these perspectives, they are organized around what we call four plus one engagements. And these uh, engagements are mediating tactics urban cultures, legacies, the Brussels way, and craftsmanship. And it is from this perspective of craftsmanship that we are glad and honored to have Home Mayol from that uh, architect is present here for the lecture. I think since Kome told me, and maybe you can uh, show yourself, uh, Kome, so that we know you're there and that the audience can start to acquaint themselves with you. Yeah, I have my camera on, but it seems that... Okay, sorry. No, it's okay. But he informed um, me that the lecture... <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry Thomas. Inge, could you please allow me to open my, because uh, I think uh, the host stopped me. Ah, okay. That's it, well, sorry. No, no problem. Okay. Yeah, yeah. super, there yeah. you are. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome again. A pleasure. Yeah. So he, he informed me that uh, today's lecture is, uh, is a very in intense uh, lecture um, that uh, will be some kind of a interesting and rich ride. The, so I'm not going to talk for too, mu uh, too much time and, and going to give the floor uh, immediately to, to Kome. Um, the reason why we invited uh, you here this evening is that from this idea or from this organization in the engagement, we focused and we invited you as a craftsperson, a person who knows his or her craft and is able to work thoroughly within that and in your case, I think, especially also detailing materiality, textures, and not being afraid also of referencing and knowing your um, background as a practitioner is core to your practice. It's also an opportunity because you recently won a competition together with uh, one of our colleagues, uh, officers, um, Gafpa, uh, Floris de Bruin, for a new church in uh, Herentals here in Flanders, which is an amazing thing for a number of reasons, especially mm -hmm. also the fact that uh, a new church can be built. And you informed me in the beginning or in this uh, pre-talk that you embraced also the openness of the client in that uh, dialogue mm -hmm. and promised that some of those images would be hidden <laughs> somewhere and integrated in the presentation. Sure. So without further ado, I give the floor to you, Home. Thank you again for this lecture. And um, we are looking forward to it. Maybe one practical thing, since the lecture is quite substantial in time, there will be a, mm, not an opportunity of a very uh, extensive debate after the lecture, but please have a lively debate in uh, the Q&A box uh, in, um, so that we can 
at some point refer to your questions and um, conclude the session. But for now, here is uh, Tome. Okay. Thank you so much, Thomas. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the invitation, for also for the presentation. And um, uh, on one hand, I have to tell you that um, I'm so happy to be here, but I'm not that happy because I'm not there. No, then uh, um, sometimes uh, technology helps us, but it has also this double sense, no, that uh, we are not face to face and we cannot go for a beer afterwards, but anyway. Um, uh, okay, I will, I will try to, to, to go uh, somehow um, over several projects um, um, that we recently finished or that we are working with. Probably some of them or half of them somehow uh, are not published anywhere yet because of this uh, timing that is, there's no time left for for uh, doing uh, presentations but um, I will start sharing my screen um, and yeah as you as you full screen better okay um, as you as you start introducing this this kind of topic of the craftsman of the uh, they are we, 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 I mean, we, we talk, I talk in the name of Tele Architectures, that's a group of people, but uh, mainly with two partners, Jidene and myself. Uh, we, we feel very comfortable working. Um, uh, we feel not comfortable, but I think we cannot work in another way, is the way we understand ourselves, no? Is that we are part of tradition somehow, no? And tradition always has work in the sense of repeating you know, once and again. You know? And every repetition, it's never a repetition itself, a complete repetition. It's always a step forward to something better, you know? to repeat some how to give this perfection to, to, the, to the work. You know? Then um, I, I want to start with a, with a book that we, we, we love so much. Um, uh, it has some some thoughts in it, you no? Know, that from time to time we we go on that book and uh, we we still find uh, we grab uh, the, not just quotes but the the, the whole thought, you no? Know? Uh, the, the the title of this book is uh, Local Words, you no? Know? It's it's a book it's written in Catalan, you no? Know? But uh, Paraules Locals that mean uh, local word. You know, local could be another another word that we feel not comfortable, but that we are working uh, local, no, mm, uh, uh, everywhere we can, we can work. In this, in this um, uh, book, um, and in relation with the repetition and the way the craftsmen work, I would say, we, we took this, this first quote, I, I'm going to read, you know, in the measure that no repetition is ever entirely possible, and in the very attempt to repeat the genesis of the difference, or more precisely, the inevitable modulations of the move is inscribed in it. We create then by repeating, and we repeat by creating as well. The force of this phenomenon is splendid. The turbidity, it also generates a repetition that seems new and the novelty that seems repeated. You know? Then somehow in this frame, you know, um, we feel that um, as these wonderful pictures from 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 uh, the Becker couple, let's say, you know, uh, Bertrand Hila Becker, um, it took thousands of photos and and uh, different themes, no, and uh, the, the the showing always uh, this repetition, but the repetition that it's never the same, no, it has um, uh, uh, step forward in every in every repetition no then i will walk over this uh, at, at, at the end it, it, i i took these 10 projects no they can work more or less in couples because i i took some um uh, uh topics no that are related to the to this to this craftsman uh, main topic no and uh, uh of course i could split I could change, I could interchange the topic from one project to another, 
but uh, in this case, I organize it like, like this way, you know? Then the, the first topic could be related to this house that we finished a couple of years ago, no? And I would like to uh, introduce this first topic of the, of the tradition, no? Tradition comes from the Latin tradere, no? That means to bring things forward, no? Tradition is not, not something that is dead, that we copy as, as, as a folkloric, uh, element that we have and we are referred to, no, but uh, we understand repetition as transmission of knowledge. You know? Then we feel in this sense that we are part of this tradition. You know? If we talk from the Mediterranean Sea, and we talk from Mallorca, Mediterranean culture, and we talk about typologies in architecture, of course, the traditional typology could be the patio. The patio can be understood on, only as a, as a place, as a room, but it's not, no. At the very beginning, it was kind of a machine, no, more than a room, no. It was called impluvium, no. Then a way of collecting the water from the rain inside the house. Here in the Mediterranean, as you know, it's more dry than, than Belgium, for example, no, and is in a scarce resource, water. Then probably, in this case, um, the, the patio was somehow a water collector, no, and the water deposit itself. During tradition, during the years, during the centuries, this um, typology um, uh, was uh, enriched, no? And it became somehow, when it moved to the north of Italy, to the Lombardy, no? Into this representative space, no? To the main space of the house where everything happens around, no? These business family uh, palaces, no? Always were made around a patio, no? Uh, but Every time, as you see, the patios uh, referred to water, representation and water at the same time, and a space where to, where to be, a room without roof somehow, no? And when our businessman traveling along the, the Mediterranean Sea in the 18th century came to, 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 to Mallorca, we're coming back to Mallorca, they also brought typologies, no? These uh, typologies somehow, somehow are grafted in this past in this tradition you know, of centuries, you know, of centuries of perfection and repetition of the same typology in this sense. You know? But in the materials we have here, not in the ones from the north of Italy, then this sandstone we have, etc. You know? But always, in this case, you see the section of the pavement related to the water. You know? And also related to the movement of the air, then it's a cooling machine too, not just a water collector. In Mallorca, we have these specific typologies called uh, possession, uh, and the patio in this case is called clastra, coming from cloister, more, more or less, where you have different units, different volumes, you know, very simple units, very uh, 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 structural units that are placed around an empty space, then around the patio. The house can grow more or less, but the empty space is kept as this inner court, this cloister. You know? And of course, during the centuries, during the last century too, this, what they were called the regional, uh, the regional criticism, no? Uh, also was uh, looking at this past and, tr and trying to bring this past forward, no? And trying to make the architecture to belong to the place where it's built, no? Then having this main space of the center of the patio as the, as the core of the, of the architecture of these houses, no? always related to the system, to the water, to the uh, possibility of having this kind of, um, let's say, oasis, no? In the middle of the, of the house, no? This wonderful atmosphere and also um, uh, ecosystem, no? In the middle of the, of the house. This happens along the latitudes of, of the same latitudes around the world, of course, in different uh, resources, different uh, materialities, of course, because we have all different resources, no? But what we try to do is to look at this tradition and to bring it forward somehow, to copy and to translate and to bring it forward. Somehow to repeat, as I said uh, in the introduction, is never to repeat. No? And in this case, I will talk about a house that is in this urbanization, an urbanization that, as you see, it depends on, I don't know what, but it's not very nice as a plan. No? However, the first photo we took, uh, it was quite interesting, I think. No. Uh, just jumping up the car the first time we were at the plot, no? Then we had a uh, uh, soft slope facing south. And 
with a wonderful view to the to the Palma Bay. This is the sea, as you see, the blue line there is the sea. Then up, super nice slope with super nice views and nice uh, orientation. You know? Then the first sketch somehow that came into my, our minds was, okay, uh, people that are walking through the street right now have to keep this view, this landscape. The landscape has to be over the house. You no, know? It's much more important the landscape rather than the house. And the house will be somehow buried into the terrain, will be part of the terrain. The house doesn't want to disappear at all. I mean, it's not a question of, of hiding the, 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 the house, but it's somehow to become part of this landscape and to have the view above all. Then we did this zoom out of the patios of the culture of the Mediterranean Sea, then a zoom in of the views and topography and orientation. But if we jump into the plot and we keep on zooming in, we saw, we found at that moment uh, that all along the plot, there were these rocks appearing underneath the earth that was covering somehow, that was a sub suspect that the terrain was completely super strong. You know, it was a, a strong terrain uh, with, with stones all around, you know, of rocks. You know? And in between these rocks, a lot of flowers and plants, different plants, different smells, flowers along the year were appearing. Somehow it was a garden, a natural garden somehow, uh, with local uh, varieties of plants that were flowering and smelling along the year in a different sense. No? Then from these different uh, reeds of the surroundings of the place where we built, no? we came into this section that's the last section, is the, the section of the, of the project, where, of course, the, the house was uh, um, uh, buried, as we saw, that from the sea you can see over it. No? Then we built a huge roof uh, with the plants, with this local plants we have around, no? and with a patio in the center. But there are more things we could call somehow a read of this reserve as, a, as another topic. No? Things that are there, but you don't see them, no? Or you see them, you perceive them, but they are pretty nothing, no? No materiality behind it, no? I'm talking about, for example, I talk about the thickness of the roof and you can say, okay, because of the earth, because of the plants, because of this, but it's also something else. It's related to inertia. The inertia of a building that we really need here in the island. We cannot have houses that changes the temperature just for, because they are thin building construction, no? has to be somehow heavy in order to uh, uh, have also hydroscopy, you know, this uh, um, possibility of the materials to keep the humidity. And when the wind blows, somehow it breathes and it sweats this humidity and it cools the house. You know, that's very important. Another thing, the patio. The patio works in a double sense. It doubles the facade. That means that the house will lose a lot of heat. Then that's nice because it cools again the building. On the other hand, you have this chimney effect, something you don't see in the sections, of course, in the drawings, but it's there. You perceive it, no? And on the other hand, I was saying before that the house is facing the sea. As you can imagine, there is there is a physical phenomenon uh, in mainly in summer when it's really hot. The earth, the island, is super hot, but the sea is not that hot. Then in the middle of the day when the earth is completely, uh, I don't know, 40, 40 something degrees, no? There is a pressure and depression that creates a breath from the sea to the inner of the island in perpendicular to the sea. What happens, it, this is called, uh, it's a sea breath, no? We call it ambad, it has a name, no? And it blows in summer, in the hottest days. What happens? If you have a very big opening facing the sea and then a smaller one in the back, the air can accelerate while crossing the, the house, then this is something that will cool, help you to cool down the building, you no, know, without consumption of energy, etc. You no, know? then it's something that you don't see, but is there and it's part of the game. You no, know? then this is a drawing that we did um, uh, afterwards, of course, after uh, finishing finishing the, the, the building. You no, know? it's not part of the process, but it was part of our uh, thought you know, when, when we were doing the, the, the project. You know? Then the, the first sketch was on how this cloister has a, let's say, human shape or architectonical shape, 
thinking on a squarish, no, something easy to build, no. Uh, but at a certain point, we thought, no, 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 this has to be something else, no. This patio has to be transformed into some, some something else. We, we, I need to find more corners, more uh, small rooms in that room, no. Something more complex somehow, no. We start pushing somehow the the, the, the inner sets of this patio, transforming this, let's say, simple patio of the square, no, into something else, no. At a certain point, we find out that if we were pushing the center part of the facades into the court, then we were discovering five different spaces, four in the corners and another one in the center. But this one in the center could be, let's say, covered as the porch, no? Let's say porch right now. Uh, it, uh, and we had four patios and a porch in the middle. Then this was something else, no? Then, uh, sorry, uh, no, here. Uh, uh, if we talk about the plan, in this plan, you also always have the street on top and the views at the bottom, no? Then south is at the bottom and north on top. Uh, what we built is a house made of different rooms, rooms organized as we saw in the cluster typology, no? Like structural units, uh, rooms as units organized around the patio. And some of these units, some of these rooms, some of these structural units, wanted to jump into the, into the patio, want to be part of the patio, want to look into the patio, defining these five different spaces. And this central part will be somehow covered, let's say somehow covered at the moment. No? Then that creates somehow a roof as a topography, an artificial topography. No? And the structure, if you want to have uh, um, uh, units as rooms and as a structure, you have to build with bearing walls, bearing low walls. No? Then um, at this point, uh, all this plan could be understood as the structure, let's say a structure that holds the building, but also structure that defines the distribution, you could say, of the, of the building. No? Then in terms of having more and more inertia, we placed all the services around the perimeter of the house in order to have all the wardrobes, all the bathroom, uh, toilets, kitchens, in, in the perimeter of it, that was creating more inertia in the perimeter and more relation of the rooms and the patio, transversal connections, visual connections between the rooms and the patio. This is how the house ended up, more or less, no? On top, we have the street. Then this part here is somehow into the terrain, no? Then the, this half part of the house, the, the one you see on top, it's 90 centimeters over this part there. This is because, as we talked before, the terrain was completely strong, solid, no? and it was difficult to do the excavations. Then we thought, OK, it, we don't need to have just one platform. We can have two levels, then 90 centimeters over, and that creates some privacy to the bedrooms that are behind, in the area behind. And also, it creates views from the areas behind over the ones through the sea that we have uh, in front. No? Then you have the more public areas in the, in the Closer, in, closer to the to the views, not to the south. Then dining, li, um, living, dining, and kitchen in this uh, shared position, having diagonals in between. Then, no? then this could be the plan when we cut the house in level, let's say one meter over the pavement. But if we go up over the lintels of the of the doors, perhaps you have other relations in between the rooms. No, this is very simple. Um, uh, rhythm, this very simple scheme of having this, let's say, necklace of rooms and some rooms in, in, the, in the, looking in the, in the court and having this double, uh, this is double level level, no? This simple, um, uh, let's say, decisions create somehow a complex variety of the sections. In this case, we are cutting, we have the street, or let's say on top here, uh, right, and the views on the bottom left, no? Then uh, we are cutting, uh, in the west uh, side of the house, moving back to the east. You know? Then uh, at the very first section, what we see is all interior. You know? This is the living, this is the bedroom area, and this is uh, everything interior. A part of it, 90 centimeters over. But if we move back a couple of meters, you find an interior, then an exterior, another interior, another exterior, and another interior. Some of them in different level. But let's move back then interior, then everything in exterior in different levels and interior and a part of the exterior is covered. Let's see how later on. Then if we move back, interior, exterior, but covered, then interior again. 
If we move back, it's interior, it's serial, interior, serial, and the level change, you know, then somehow you have this variety, this complexity, but coming from a, let's say, very thin, simple positions, you know, that in the blank can be understood as simple. Uh, and as we have seen in, the, in these sections, in the interior facades, a lot of elements appear, you know, a beam, a lintel, a lot of bricks, some uh, switchers, elements that are part of the building process that define this interior, you know, that define this kind of architecture. And what we did with this central part of the patio that was going to be covered somehow, I said porch, you know, during the process we did this model, right now we find it somehow funny, you know, because it was uh, a test to check out how this central part of the court was going to be covered. You know? We thought, okay, what we want from this covering, from this roof, it's to let the sun come in in winter, but not in summer. And we did this test. If you think on it, it's somehow stupid because it's obvious that we will have more sun in summer rather than in winter. And we wanted the opposite, no? But most of the times when we want to uh, to, to, when we don't find a solution, no, we don't look at tradition directly, but sometimes we, we find it just thinking on it, no, in tradition, no. Then the, tra the, the traditional solution for this is super clear, easy, cheap, whatever you can imagine, no, uh, is to have a vine tree. And then to have vegetation growing over a very simple structure, metal one or whatever, no, that allow the vegetation to grow. If we were going to have, let's say, uh, a green roof, we could imagine that the green roof will grow over a very simple structure in the middle of this patio. Then in winter, you will have no leaves. Then the sun will go in, but not in summer where the leaves are growing you know, and creating this wonderful vegetal atmosphere. You know? And let me open a parenthesis, you know, because we have been saying that all of these interiors are made of materials, et cetera, et cetera. You know? Let's go on that. You know? uh, I'm joining a picture that belongs to, to uh, Sigurd Leverens, you know, the Swedish architect, you know? and uh, one of the churches, you know, where he said that he did not cut any brick. You know? And I'm joining uh, uh, underneath a sentence from Louis Kahn. You know? They both probably never met, uh, I'm sure. But I think they were sharing somehow one thought of respect to materiality, you know, to materials, to elements that you bring on site. You know? Louis Kahn said, even a brick wants to be something. You know? Let's keep on that. Uh, this is a Jonathan house in Mallorca, Can Lease, you probably know it, but I don't want to explain the, the house at all. I just want you to pay attention to one small element. You know? And th th this is a house made of sandstone, a house made of if it's sandstone, then walls, no? then mainly a wall structure, as you have in the first volume they, they built, they start building here. No? And this is a, a volume where you have a, the, the main room of this volume, it's a room that is uh, three meters, 20 centimeters wide. In the center of it, there is a column. What is this column do, doing in the center of a room that is three meters, 20 wide? Do you need this column? Let's move to Leverens again. This is the church in uh, Kiplan in, in Sweden again. Uh, he built this wall structure. That's the main space of the church where the service takes place. No, uh, It's a thick wall made of bricks. No brick is cut, etc. as I said. And in the center of it, as you see, there is double uh, profile, metal profile as a column, you know? in between the believers and the priests. There was no other solution. There was no other possibility rather than placing a column rather in the, in, the, in the center of this room. I think so, there was. But what is this column doing here? This is the T-shaped column of um, uh, Jornudzon in Mallorca. And this is the Christ column from Leverens. These columns are there because even a column wants to be something. And every element you bring on science wants to be something, no? Has to be respected somehow, no? You, you, you are bringing elements that everyone, every one of these elements 
want to be present and want to be something. And then how we build this house, how we take care of each element. No? If we take like layers of building process, no? uh, I can start from the outer layer. No? As you can imagine, everything is thought at the same time, no? but to explain it is much better to go step by step. No? Then we have an outer layer that is made of stones. No? It's a very thick layer because of this inertia. No? It's 50 centimeters thickness of a mm, cyclopean concrete wall. But why? It's because during the excavation, we took all these stones of, from the terrain, no? and all these stones, instead of bringing them to somewhere out of the plot, no? we decide to keep there and to build a, wall, a facade that can be understood as a deposit of, wall, uh, a deposit of stones. Sorry. Then this wall is more than a facade. No? It's made of the stones coming from the terrain. Then again, not local, but ultra local, no? coming from uh, kilometer zero, no, less than that. No? Then if the outer layer is made of stones, the inner layer was going to be made of clay, of earth coming from the island, in this case, from the southeast of the island, no? making these uh, walls in bricks and the dimensions of the wall depend on the dimension of the brick. The dimension of the brick, the length is 25 centimeters, well, 24 plus one of the joint, then every room depends on this dimension. No brick is cut at all. No? Then on these walls that want to be uh, have a presence, no? um, um, uh, each, uh, in, in each one of these rooms, you have somehow uh, furniture that will be part of these walls. No? At the very beginning, we thought on wooden furniture attached to the wall, but at the end, we ended up with, with concrete furniture as you you will see later on. But I can also talk about this house just explaining the pavement and I could explain the whole house. No, We have a traditional way of building pavements here in, in, in Mallorca, it's the hydraulic tiles. Um, um, and with these tiles, with the frame they have, they build this kind of flowers, no, or flowered uh, uh, patterns, no? and in each room they build uh, uh, a carpet somehow, no? understanding that each room is a unit, et cetera, et cetera. No? And we decided to do this um, in each room, but using, as you are going to see later on, using the frame in a wrong way, let's say, no? not using as it was before, but in a wrong way, no? filling the, the, the holes of this, of this frame in a wrong way, in another way. No? Then, but what happens with the, with the ceiling? No? In this case, it was, I haven't said you before, but it was the first house we built for a client, not a friend, not a neighbor, not a, 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 a brother. No? Then it was the first client calling. No? Then it was a, such a, an important um, uh, um, uh, work for us. No? Then in the ceiling, instead of having beams, let's say, prefab beams every 60 centimeters or 70, you know, or we decided to have, uh, because of the thickness of the, of the roof too, you know, is to have this thick and massive, uh, um, in situ uh, concrete beams, no? And we place them in a very uh, wide span, we'll say, no? It's uh, one meter 25, I mean, five bricks in between each one of the beams, no? And then uh, what happened with when this structure comes to the center? We would like to have, as I said before, a non finished structure. Then the different directions of how collapse, let's say, no, they cannot finish, no, they cannot end this structure. Then we add very thin uh, metal elements in between them, no, the one that is used for um, reinforcing concrete, no. Then the uh, green, the plants will do the rest and will end, will finish. But what, what happens when you ask to every element that wants to be on site, you become some cow in a mad way, in a crazy way, you not know, thinking on everything. You know? Of course, if we have these bricks, we don't want to break any brick, then we, are, we don't want to, bring, to build uh, scarves on the, on, the, on the bricks. Then what happens with electricity, for example? You know? In this case, what we decide is to substitute uh, some bricks for a piece of wood to be able to uh, screw uh, one um, plug or switch or whatever, uh, electrical element, it needs to be there, no? As you see here, we take out some bricks to substitute for a um, piece of wood, no? If we look at this um, uh, 
facade, you can say, okay, just a piece of uh, bricks, uh, wonderful light, whatever, no? But it's not just uh, like that, no? Pay attention to the joints, to the vertical joints. There is uh, one position, then position two, position one, position two, position one, position two, position two. Position one, position two, position one, position two, yeah? two, two again here. What happens with this double brick layering on the same position and not moving half a brick? What happens is that the brick was four centimeters thick and the plaques were eight centimeters. Then we were not able to place one um, uh, uh, electrical element uh, um, plaque or switcher over one brick, one layer of bricks. Then we decide to, uh, to be coincident to two layers, no? In order to take two bricks and to substitute for one piece of wood, no? Then that's why you have these double layers all around the house in 30 centimeters, in one meter, in 220 per two, because you have also the 90 centimeters over. No? Then that creates somehow a rhythm in the, but it's a need of a, the building process, no? Then in this, let's say not big, but a small model, you can see all these elements, no? Uh, beams, uh, lintels, uh, uh, whatever, no? And what is this column doing here? have been saying that uh, it wasn't a structure made of walls, but there is a column. Of course, the answer is clear. No, this column also wants to be something. No, this column is the, the column. It represents the columns of the world, no, somehow. No? Then why this column is not in the, in the, in the uh, intersection between these two beams? No? Because the column is not a beam. The column is a column. Then it wants to to somehow to have autonomy. No? And what happens on the floor? That's not a mistake from the, from the uh, uh, model, no? Uh, as we all know, normally we see the columns starting from the pavement, no? But we, don't, we, we know that, perfectly know, that the columns do not start on the pavement. They start on the foundation. And something happens beneath the, the pavement, no? In this case, at that point of the project, we are thinking on taking some uh, um, tiles off, no? Showing the foundations having a hole around the, the column, but of course the client wasn't uh, very happy with that solution. We neither. Then we, we went uh, 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 through, through another solution that we, you will see later on how it is built. No? Then you see the fits furniture in concrete uh, in the kitchen and also in the dining room. And when we ended up, uh, uh, what we uh, talked before, no? you can see over the house, no? and at that moment that, that was just ending uh, the, the building process, no? But we, what we were expecting is that the vegetation was going to grow in a, somehow in a wild way, becoming part of this uh, vegetation around, around the house. No? As you can see also the, the cyclopean concrete made of these uh, stones you know, that were taken from the, from the terrain. And okay, the house is not disappearing at all. I, we, we didn't want to, to, to hide the house. No? We just want to, to, to be in a, uh, uh, to, to pay attention to the, to the landscape. No? And to be in a, in a second row. No? Here you can start to see the patio in, inside. And if there is only one door, probably that's the, the entrance. No? If we move to the, to the front side, you see this much uh, huge um, or wilder opening in order to bring this breeze from the sea no? to accelerate the air to the, to the patio no? and to create a lower consumption of, of energy. No? And when we go in, as you see the pavement no? of this kind of carpet, no? And what you see, every element, there is no furniture intentionally, no? To say, okay, uh, the furniture will come, but what you see, it's somehow complex already, no? And it's not about, it's just about, um, let's say, um, uh, building elements, no? Uh, constructive elements, no? As you see here, how this detail of the column uh, ended up, no? It's, uh, it's a mirror on, on the floor, um, flashed with a, with a, with a with the tiles, no, and as you see, somehow the continuation of this column to the to the foundations, not to understand the foundations also want to be something, no. Then the, the all the plaques, no, on the on these corners, no, understanding the wood as a massive, also massive element, no. And this is structural wall, no. Then now we are in the dining room in between the two small patios, and we have the porch in the center and the views on the and the porch on the left on the right and the. And the views on the on the left, no. Now we turned around 180 degrees, no, facing the kitchen on the on this diagonal, no. 
And then we, we go back again, no, uh, watching this, this triple space of uh, kitchen, dining and living coming together in, a, in separate rooms, no, having these connections in diagonal. And every element you see, it's like uh, lintels, whatever, it's um, a constructive need, no. Then we move to the back, to the, to the bedroom area, no. Do you see the double row of bricks, no, where, where the switches are placed? And from this, these are the, the two uh, children bedroom in the back, in the center of the back side of the of the house. Through this window, when you are sitting at the desk, you can see the the the, the sea through the through the dining room, no. And over these two twenty, you have relationship between the different rooms, no. You get somehow different points of view that are different from the one you have at one meter, no. Then we get into this, let's say, oasis, no. This long diagonal through the different patios and porches, no? This is just when the house was finished, no? Where we plant some vegetation, but the vegetation, as we thought, as we were imagining, because this eco-climate we create in this uh, patio, these wonderful conditions, no? Of humidity and, and temperature, no? The vegetation, as we were expecting, started to grow somehow in a wild way, no? Uh, sometimes, uh, perhaps it's a, a bit too much. I don't know. I I like the vegetation. No? Why this typology? Why this patio? Why the patios in the Mediterranean Sea? It's because of the climate, of course, no? And because of the climate, we have our habits, no? Um, I, I, I just want to stop in, in this picture for one moment, no, because it's 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 a room. You can say it's a room, no, because it's there is a bed, there is a piano, chairs, no. But but there is a pine tree, it has no roof, no, there is a grass, no. Then in it's interior somehow, but it's written interior, no. Somehow the, the, the patios are this part of interior that is uh, an outdoor room uh, or a room without roof. It is in between the spaces, no. We we have these habits of Having lunch in the in the outside, you no. Know, having these houses that most of it it's it's serial uh, space, you no. Know? If the patio is not enough, we we take the street also as a living room, you no. Know? Our houses that the main space, but the uh, most of the uh, area of the house belongs to the to the patio, you no. Know, to this outer, you no. Know? We do dinners uh, outside. We we do classes, you no. Know? This is a workshop we did. Uh, I don't know, a lot of years ago already, but I don't know, 2000 something, 2005 or something. No? We have um, shops in the streets, of course. We have churches without roof. No, we do the siesta in the streets, also in the in the in the squares. No, we have workshops outside the the main work space. No, we have typologies that depend mainly on this outer space. No. Uh, my or our daughter having a siesta, you know, in this in between space, you no, know, between the interior and the exterior, plants full of these uh, outer spaces, you no. Know? And this is a house in the countryside, in between two villages that have super different shape, as you see. One more um, uh, irregular, you no, know, and the, the other one super regular in grid, you no. Know? And around that, in the in the in the in the surroundings, we find these kind of small shelters, you no, know, small. Shelters, no. In fact, they are not houses, but shelters for for the tools to use in the fields, no. And in in our plot, there was part of one of the shelters, no, because it has only three walls of this um, uh, stony uh, walls, no. It was uh, twelve meters 0.5 per four four point five something, no. And it has a, a front facade with openings that were somehow demolished, also without roof, no. At that point, no. What we decided is to extend this, to demolish the, this front facade and to extend it to obtain an enclosure that was around uh, 150 uh, square meters, no? And we were just uh, allowed to build uh, 100 meters, no? And what we decided is to occupy partially this enclosure in order to obtain different patios that, want, that, that, that will work in connection with the interior, no? Then we have interior uh, activities, no? Like the kitchen, 
uh, sleeping rooms, living, etc. But we also can cook outside. We can have a siesta under a tree in a hammock. We can have a living on the patio, etc. Then every room is in connection with the patio that has next to it. No, you always have this this connection. This is it. Then when you approach this simple volume that was made with the same materials that we find in this creation, the same that were used to make the old the, the old perimeter of it, that you kind of cannot perceive where, where it was the beginning and what it was the standard because it's the same process, the same solutions, no? Then when you approach to it, you don't know where you're getting in, no? Probably this is an interior or I don't know, probably it's an exterior, I don't know, this patio, these spaces in between, this double room, no? That double the, uh, the area of the house without building anything, no? Then in this case, it was plastered, kind of a room, uh, but without pavement and without roof, no? Then through the house, from these patios, you perceive this transversality, you no know, kind of long views from this very small house. You no, know? and that's before getting occupied. You no, know? you always have this double uh, um, uh, rooms. You no, know? at, at a certain point, we ending finishing this house with these stones that has this traditional look. I will say, you no, know? we're not. Uh, we are not probably not convinced it was part of the process that we try to follow the process, but not our aesthetical, um, let's say, uh, intentions. No, it was because of the material we had there, because of the resources, and it ended up with that. No, and at that point we wrote this sentence. No, or we thought this. No, that there are certain kind of architecture that one finished, they are still incomplete. They leave an adequate margin for the user. To change them, to complete and to take ownership of them. No, you just have to take time and to let the time to pass by. Now that was a thought. No, and we did uh, uh, some um, collages. No, uh, but thinking on this kind of architectures. No, that are attached to the house. No, that probably uh, they can allow to have a shadow, as we saw before. No, some architectures doesn't allow. To, to have this somehow attachments, no? It's perhaps too violent for, for some kind of architecture no? that, that we also do. But uh, in this case, we thought, okay, this is a kind of architecture that can be, uh, that, that, that is open somehow, no? Um, then we thought on, on we did this, these collages, no? And, but we, we didn't know that at a certain point the client was going to call us to say, okay, I want to have a porch. And they asked him if he was looking for a porch or a shadow. And he answers me that was more important a shadow than a porch. Of course, he wanted a porch that keeps shadow. No? Then we built this stuff no? because he was not able to build anything else, neither one square meter more. And with this solution, you don't build that. You don't build, let's say. And as you see, uh, the, the patio was occupied for a second um, uh, living room with a sofa, the toys from the children, and the, and the small shed of the of the dog, you know, the house of the dog in this in this patio. No? But let's move forward to the to, to another topic. It's it, perhaps we have been introducing it, uh, uh, but the, the material, no, but not just the material as material itself as the respect element, no, but also as as waste, no, as waste material as a place of opportunities, no? place of um, uh, second opportunities for, for the materials, no? then as reuse, as, as patina, as ruin. No? All these elements that we have been having a lot of, let's say, masters of reuse, no? like uh, Jose Maria Jujal, no? or we found all along the traditional architecture that probably you can change the lintel because of uh, and structural need or possibility, no? Before there were no lintels, no, uh, no beams, no uh, metal elements, no? Then they need to build an arch. They probably had uh, horses and carts that were uh, um, dismantled to, in order to, to get in the, in, the, in the garage, no? Then probably this door is opening towards the interior, no? But when we substitute the carts for cars, no? The cars are longer, you cannot, uh, Separate it, no? Then you cannot have this kind of door. 
you need to know sliding door. Then the sliding door is mm, uh, answers also to a beam that right now we are allowed to have, to have, no? But what doesn't change is the door. The door is exactly the same that was there before, but with something else, with some additions, we reuse it. Not recycling, but reusing. And reusing, you can create something completely new, but from old. Then from old stuff, you create a new, let's say, life of objects that some, most of the times were obstacles, obstacles to plant these trees, that reusing them in a certain way, uh, you can build from the obstacle a solution. Solution that most of the time allow the patina of time to be part of the game, to be part of the architectural game with these reliefs, with probably the main aim to become a ruin at a certain point. No? This is a house in a, in a corner. And to, to be, sorry, to be in a corner is quite a specificity of this village, no? In fact, this is the village where, where I was born, you know? Then you have a lot of houses. Most of them are in, in between party walls. They just have one direction from the street to the patio, but in this case, not. In this case, the corner made the possibility of having these two directions from left to right and from top to bottom. You know? Then this double direction creates already the scheme for the structure. Then each room will look into a different direction because of the structure. These bearing walls that you are going to see later on why it's built of um, 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 uh, bearing walls, no? Um, uh, each room is looking into an, a different direction. Then to have the possibility of these views, transversal views through the cows to the exterior, what we did is to open openings, not only to the street, not only into the facade, but also into the bearing interior walls. No? And you have somehow transversal relations between the interior and the exterior, no? through all the interiors. No? And again, in fact, it was before, uh, all the services on the perimeter because of the inertia on one hand and the relation in between, the visual relation between the different rooms. No? Then you end up with this main plan no, of the uh, dining, kitchen, living and studio, and going up, changing the level of each room, finding also specificities of each room. No? Then with this simple plan, let's say again, somehow a kind of interior complexity of the space, no? because you have different levels, because you have cuts, skylights, a relationship between the different rooms, openings that connect the different rooms, et cetera, no? But of course, we were talking about material, no? Before building the house in that plot, there was this shelter. It's a shelter like a kind of garage, an old garage from the 70s or something like that, that was built with this stone, the sandstone called Mares, the one you have seen in journals on house, no? The, the Mares has a dimension normally of, normally, I mean, when it's not cut, not uh, uh, transformed, of 80 per 40 high per 20 thick, no? Then instead of demolishing it and throwing the material away, what we thought is, okay, well, this was the nice uh, texture of this wall, no? And you see it has a very thick joint and some spots there, some gaps, no? This is because they use um, a wooden element to hold the stone up while they are pouring a very liquid mortar in the joints, no? To, 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 to allow the mortar to run through the joints, no? Then it's completely full of, of mortar. And then they uh, uh, smash, let's say, I don't know, they, 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 they spread on the, on the, on the, on the, on the wall, on the, on the stone, no? Then what we decide instead of demolishing is to disassemble and to store the stones as much as possible, as big as possible in order to be reused. You know? These were the stones. And as you see in the hidden side of it, they have these scarves in order, these fish, fish bone shape scarves, let's say in order to allow the mortar to run through the joints. You know? These are more or less the shape of this uh, cuts these scarves, no? These are 
afterwards. No? What we decide is to, because right now we cannot use the same joint because we are not able, our mortars right now are very chemical, then you cannot use, let's say, three centimeters thickness of mortar and one millimeter next to it because it, the, the mortar doesn't work well, let's say, you know, you need a flashed and, and flashed not, um, uh, uh, continuous uh, joint, more or less, no? And what we did is to pay for one cut of these stones, no? Very precise one, in order to obtain soft and uh, uh, flat, uh, perfect uh, sides, no? And then we rotate it, having the hidden, hidden side of the wall now as a facade of the stone, sorry, now as a facade, no? And then the section of the other stone was 20 per 20. If we fall was 20 per 40 per 80 long, but now it become 20 per 20 per, let's say X long, because uh, some of them were broken before in the first process of construction. And some of them were broken uh, while we were dismantling the, uh, the building. No? Then this 20 per 20, when the builder was starting to build, it was doubting about the result, of course, no, as always, no, as we were also, I huh? have to be, um, uh, but um, and he, he was saying, okay, when, when we have a gap in between these two stones of five centimeters, do I have to place a stone of five centimeters or what I do, no? Then at that point, we thought that we have in the island, you are going to see later on some more details with that tile, no? A tile that is very common, very traditional, very cheap, uh, everywhere you find it, no? It's made of clay, clay coming from the island and the, more standard dimension of it, it's 20 per 20 centimeters. That was perfectly fitting with the side of the stone. Then I said, okay, let's bring some of these tiles. And if you have a gap, you just have to add as many tiles as you need to fill up the gap with this kind of library of tiles. You are going to see later on. Then this is the part where we used the old mares, the old stones, no? This is it, no? With this, gaps infilled with these small tiles, you know? And then, of course, the house was bigger than the previous shelter, you no? Know? Then we ended up the, the, the marais before finishing the, the volume, you no? Know? Then the other part of it is everything is new, new marais, you no? Know? But also around the frames where we need more precision, around the frames of the windows, in the lattices, around the house, etc. where we need more precision. We went to the same query, then we took somehow, uh, let's say, brothers or um, um, uh, sons of the old marais that was used uh, some um, uh, decades before, no? But the thing is that not only because of the color, not because of only of uh, romanticism, no? But because of uh, the possibility of um, uh, the heaviness, the thick, the, um, the softness, the porosity, etc., of the original walls, no? Then that's the whole and that's it, no? But, always with this aim of reusing the existing. In this case, there was a, an, a stone, as you can imagine, a rock you know, that was taken out to take the boat out and to restore it. You know? Then with this obstacle that was needed to take out, they built this scar, it's called an scar, this kind of buildings to restore the boat next to the sea. You know? And with this aim, I have explained you a building that is made of, con of um, mares, you know? but it's not. Probably you never can have one, element to an object that is just made of one material. If you see these arches, probably you can say, yes, these arches are made of these um, uh, blocks of um, 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 uh, but, um, uh, how you call it? Well, of concrete, no, let's say, but not, it's not only that. In between each piece of concrete, Perhaps concrete, what you have is a piece of wood, you know, as you see much better here. And because of this small piece of wood that is pretty imperceptible in the image before, you can build the arch. Because of the element that helps you, you can build it. We have started to talk, to talk about this tile of 20 per 20, this sheep and pretty popular and totally common in the island tile, you know. And we discovered that to build, we had some difficult, some difficulties, some not difficulties, but problems that you find, constructive problems that you can have, no? And then we started to solve all these problems with the tile, 
that I was kind of a, 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 the, the other element that you need to build the house with one material. No? In this case, for example, you have the, the facade, 20 centimeters thick, but very tall, then tones of material are loading here. No? But the interior of these um, deep windows was made also with um, a stone. Then the best way to build the ceiling is to build a bolt because it's made of stones. No? Then this 2.20 uh, uh, span is made with a bolt. Then from here to the wall we have in the back, there is a soft wall. As you see here, it's flashed with the facade, but not here. In the center is five centimeters high. But probably if this is just, it holds just itself, no, nothing else. No? Then the load here, it's not that much, but the load there, it's super heavy. Then if you touch them together, probably there will, a crack will appear. Then what we did is already to build the crack somehow with these tiles, with these rows of tiles, no? that probably will create also another, solve another problem. When the water is falling from the facade and we want to go to the interior of the house, then you have here somehow this gap that will make the water to drop down. No? But what else? No? In these windows, which are kind of balconies, no? we need a handrail. The handrail was made of uh, reinforcing bars, reinforcing concrete bars that root, then they have oxide of iron. No? And we didn't want to hurt the marais and neither to have oxide of iron on it. No? After the time, no? it's not a nice way to become old. No? But what we did is to add some tiles and to have the, this iron, this metal bar in between them. You know why? Because these uh, tiles, they have this reddish color because the terrain, the soil, the, the earth in that place has oxide of iron. It's very rich in minerals, no? then it's uh, strong to build bricks and clay elements, no? then it's because of oxide of iron. Then when the handrail will um, root, you will have oxide of iron dropping over oxide of iron. No? Then here you see the, a small vault, no? and here the detail of the handrail inside of the uh, marais. No? Again, the, the detail here and the small vault on, on top. No? Then this is the result with the old, the new facades, the, 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 the windows, the lattices, whatever, all the textures of the mixing together no? and making a whole, reading the specificities of each corner, each detail. No? And when you are in, you have this transversality or these views through the different levels, through the different rooms, no? having a specific heights, no? because not the ceiling is not changing by the floor. No? Then you get into these specific uh, spaces from a room to another. No? If we have more time, we could go deep and probably I hope to have the possibility later on. We have to start talking about uh, reuse. No? And the church, we are, um, Thomas was explaining before that we are developing with Gappa, our, our friends here in Ghent. Um, uh, it's reusing a whole old building, no? an old building that is made of uh, bricks uh, uh, as part of the, um, let's say, um, identity of a certain place, no? in this case, Herentals, in this case, also Belgium. Uh, the reuse of these uh, bricks in order to have the aggregate to build this kind of mass concrete building, no? it's part of this reuse of the materiality. No? Not only uh, part of it, but the whole building, no? in this case, of most of it. We could go over another topic that is also related to the thing we have seen before. No? Um, it is the, it's the palimpsest, no? Of course, as I was talking before, I was trying to read the space where we have to build, read the plot, read the surroundings, no? Then what do we have under our feet? What, what do we have under our feet? What, what has happened there before? Probably um, we, uh, as architects, we are, not, we are never going to be the first acting, intervening, intervening in a, in a certain place, no? Probably something has happened there before, no? 
Uh, of course, there are wonderful historical uh, and more important um, you know, examples as the city of Troy, you know, that is built over another, another, another city or um, a split that is built over a palace. You no, know? now what was a room? Now it's a what was a room or a church? Now it's a, a, a square. You no, know, it's a transformation and the re, the reuse of a whole building of a whole city. You no, know, that is transformed into something new. Then to read the layers of this palimpsest and to bring it into uh, your project, I think is part of this. Uh, thought, no, to reuse and not to waste, no. Then it can be done in very different ways, no. As you uh, uh, know, and you have many good examples, of course, in 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 Belgium, no. Uh, but it's this kind of a common sense of not uh, wasting but reusing, no. And I want to talk about a, a small project we that is built, well, that is built on on building, no. For a long, long, long time, it's very slowly proceeding. No, it's an apartment in the city center of Palma, no, where you have a corner apartment, no, uh, top and right is the street, no. Then when we get in, we just find this somehow structure and the perimeter of the facade, no. And with respect for both elements, no, we decide to place these rooms in chest position again to have this cross. Diagonal views, no, to define the rooms that were going to be closed, the bathrooms and kitchen and toilet, no, or bathroom, no. Then in between you will have the more public areas, no, the playground or entrance, the dining room and the living room in between these different rooms, no. But we are talking about the palimpsest, and this is probably the first sketch or idea we show to the client, no. And it was just about four layers at that moment, no? But of course, since we started to build, the layers have been multiplied. You are going to see. Then the, the, the first layering we were showing to him is like, okay, you have support. Support is made of, of mares. This facade is very porous, no? Then it's quite top wet, no? And in, the interior was cold. Um, that's why we need to uh, isolate it, no? And then to build a double layer to the interior, that's the, third layer. The second is the structure that was already there, but apart from the exterior, apart from the facade, no? Then over this support, we are going to build these four elements, these three elements, sorry, of, of, of these uh, boxes, of these rooms, of these rooms in the room, etc. no? But, but at that point, because of, let's say, coherence, no? Every element was built in a different material. We were not looking for that. And I think at that point, at a certain point, you can think, that's a mistake to have that much materials, but at the end, I think not. I think architectures in architecture more is more, no? And the more you add, the more you obtain, no? Then the, the, the first layer was made of mares, I said. The second was concrete. The third was clay. And the fourth was um, uh, wood. Wood in order not to, to add more load on the, on, the, on the ceiling, no? But let's go step by step. Then we, the first thing we find it was the resistance of the perimeter wall. It was kind of an empty space. This is the first day visiting the, the place where the old owner already has a This is at the beginning of the crisis here in Spain, where an old owner has already started to build something, no? or, to, or to demolish something, in fact. You know? Then the old partitions were all off. No? And uh, he started to, 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 to take out the, the ceiling, the false ceiling. No? Um, then the second was the, the structure. It's particular because it's one of the um, this concrete uh, structures that it's from the 60s or 70s is uh, uh, where, where concrete started to be common, you know, let's say here in the, in the island. No? In between these columns of concrete, uh, in situ concrete, we find these specific beams, probably you have some system like this, probably not now, but uh, um, historically, you no. Know? It's these pieces of uh, U-shaped pieces of beams made of clay that you put one next to the other, then you obtain something that is from something that is prefab, you obtain something that is in situ port, no? Then it's this kind of pieces, no? Making these specific beams made of clay, no? Then we try to keep also this system, no? Then on the other hand, we have the old partitions that were demolished because of this old owner, no? The, everything was demolished, but the gaps, the traces of these old uh, uh, partitions were there. I know it's not... Um, a Troy, it's not one historical important city, but 
but it's something that, that was there, you know, and we can take advantage of it. You know? The first point was, well, the, the, the pavement was made of concrete, uh, concrete that wasn't original at all, but uh, we find this, this concrete there, you know. Then in between this gap, the first idea is, okay, we are going to pour some more concrete and that's all, no? but of course the, the concrete, when it, when it dries, it reduces the size, uh, then uh, it, it cracks, it will crack in between the old concrete and the new concrete, a crack will appear and the new concrete will never look as the old one, I'm sure, because of, I don't know, the, 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 the mortar, because of the, whatever, of the cement, of the water, of the humidity at that moment, it will look different. No? Then at a certain point we, th we said, okay, instead of pouring something, pouring a concrete that will dry, we are going to have uh, another material that makes a difference and underlines that that was a trace that was existing before. Then instead of having this concrete, what we did is to infill these gaps with mar marble, a, a quite cheap marble from Spain, it's called Macael, it's a pretty white one, no? Then what we did is to cut parallel lines to uh, make the work easier, and it wasn't that easy, but to, to have the, 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 the cuts very precise and parallel made, no? Um, then we polished to have the two sides of this gap at the same, exactly at the same level, no? We use this gap to uh, place the cables and the tubes for, for the electricity, no? And then this wonderful work came, no? Of this, again, a craftsman, I'm talking about that topic, uh, I, I forget to, to, to reference to it, but, but it's, it's during the whole lecture, it's there. Now, this is a, a guy that works with, only with, with stones, no? And he, he came up with this um, puzzle, no? And the puzzle was designed in order to obtain somehow um, a unit, one unit of this layer, no? Then the marbles were not cut in a joint when you change the direction of this shape, no? Just in between, no? Where, the, where it is straight, you can cut. Where it changes, you cannot. Then you cut here, but not there. Neither here, but there. Then you obtain this continuity in between all the stones, no? And some of them, like this T-shaped one, here you have a joint, here another one, were very um, difficult, no? Very precise or very uh, um, close to, to, to be broken, no? But, but it, it worked. Then we polished everything and we get this layer, our a small troy, no? Um, having the difference between the old and the new. But of course, it's always a relation between the way we have to build or the way we build. No? Then after isolating with um, cork uh, panels, the, all the facade panels that were coming from, uh, from, the, from the client that he has, some of them because of an old work he did, etc. You know, uh, we have to cover that, you know. And we didn't know what to use. Then we, and the budget was not super high. Then we went to a big factory asking for a piece ship. And we have, in Spain, we have this, probably you have something more or less that working the same. No? We called it thermoclay, the, the direct translation. It's thermarthilia, no, in the system, no? That works with the section of it, the side of it is 20 per 20 or 19 plus one of the joint, no? 20 per 20 per 30 long, but not in this case. This case is try, uh, 10 and five pieces uh, that are used to adjust the system. But normally in Mallorca here, well, common people, let's say, do, do not mind about the breaking the system, no, and there's not that much problem with, with heat and so on, then uh, the, the, the factory has to uh, produce these pieces to maintain the, the stamp from the system, but they don't sell that much. Then at a certain point, I found this amount of pieces in the corner, I say, okay, what, what is that, no? Say, oh, I, I'm never going to sell this, no? Or I said, oh, and what is this? He starts to explain me this story that I explained you before. And I said, okay, I, I want those. I, I, can, I can get them, uh, no problem. And the prices started to rise no? <laughs> until a certain point where we got in a, in a balance. Then we, we got them all, no? In order to use them in a the wrong way. Normally this is the facade, but we, we use this as a thickness and this as a facade, no? But 
this is a 20 per 20 site, no? And as you see, there is a very strong relief, it's close to two centimeters relief, no? And how can you place an, uh, a switcher or a plug on top of this uh, relief, no? It's quite impossible, but we have our wonderful 20 per 20 tile, no? Then we start to build with the cork, then the layer of the uh, wall uh, to cover this cork, no? As you see, as in vertical uh, joints, no? Without breaking the joints, because this is not a bearing wall, understanding that this is just a, a finishing, no? And then uh, here and there start to appear some details that we solved with the clay tile. But what happens with the a screw with the um, switchers and plugs, no? of course, if the gap is 20 per 20 and we need something uh, plain, something uh, flat, no? we went again to our tile, just making very precise holes to, to, to have the screws and the, and the cables out. No? We substitute one piece of this thermoclay, this system, for one piece of this tile every time we need it to have switches or blocks, no? Then the, let's say the rooms came, no? Studying carefully the joints, not to have that much screws. We have some of them, I don't know, but uh, to make it possible, <laughs> but to, to have the less, no? Then we, we started carefully with the carpenter, very precisely bringing the stuff on, on, on site, no? And then uh, comparing proportions and with the, with the client, he's the, he's the owner, no? But what happens not only with electricity, but with lights, no? We have this, I would say, rough, but wonderful ceiling that we don't want to cut, no? Then instead of going behind the ceiling, we went out of it, no? Instead of going in with these plastic tubes, no? We went out. We went out with the tube that will hang from the ceiling. You will pluck the cable, the cable will run through the tube and the bulb of light will drop whatever you want, no? Then if the ceiling is very rough, this tube will be very precise. These brass tubes, no? Metal tubes, very shiny, no? Really in contrast with existing, not only because of materiality, but, but materiality, but also because of the shape, no? If the existing, of course, is beams, and of course, it's straight beams, no? This will be a very sensual uh, curve, no? Sometimes one, sometimes double, all the times smiling, and this is a system you plug there and it runs through the tube. And this is a, well, later on we can talk about also false ceilings and et cetera, more, more layers, no? But this is a more or less a result we are uh, doing, no? And this is how it is right now, close to be finished, I think. But we always come with something else that can be much more complex or much more interesting, no? In this case, we have a lot of time because the client is not in a hurry at all. No, then we are building very slowly. No? But this is it, all the layers together, the pavement, the bricks, the switches, the columns, the ceiling, rooms, whatever. Everything is adding something else. No? And probably, as I said, afterward or in another op opportunity, we can talk about the full ceiling as another layer that has appeared. If we have more time, we could also go into more and more and more detail and talking about um, this possibility that humans beings have of perceiving things, no? We are very precise, we can be very precise. Huh? We could talk about the millimeters of this aggregate, no? And what is this, no? This is a stone that is, uh, sorry, um, a tile that is 13 per 13, 13 plus a joint of one centimeter, no? There was an existing pavement, made of uh, clay tiles, no? But it was uh, not very clean, not very clear, no? And also the owner, it's um, um, an hydraulic tile manufacturer in the island, no? And he also wanted to have um, um, uh, floor heating underneath, no? Then we remove the existing, but the existing was placed in diagonal, not having super nice uh, limits, on these tiles, no? Because the, the department is quite irregular, no? What we did is to take off, take out the old tiles and to design somehow um, carpets of this new 
13 per 13 are the old ones, placing diagonal tile, but having a nice uh, limit to the to the perimeter. You know? And what we did is to get the old tiles, to smash them, as you see here, you know, and to use them as aggregate to infill the join. Because a pavement of tiles is not just a pavement of tiles. A pavement of tiles is pavement of tiles plus the join in between them. You know? Then if you understand also the join as part of the project, you know? probably in this case, the main part of this pavement. But since we don't have that much time, I'm going to move to the next topic that probably it can be called uh, craftsmanship, no? All these things are possible because we have people, people that are able still to work uh, with these materials, with this, um, uh, with this knowledge, no? Most of them are old people. I think that right now it's kind of, uh, mm, flipping no and i think that young people are starting to to understand that this is possible no uh, to, to 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 come back and to slow down and to use these local natural resources not only materials but naturals and also social i think this net of craftsmen is part of our social resources that we have and we have to keep you no know? because if not all the system will be off, no? It's people that work with their hands and they talk with their hands too, no? Sigur Leverance again, no? In this church, like brick by brick, no? On site, or John Woodson again, on the scaffolding, no? Understanding uh, each stone, working very carefully to the material, no? Looking really close to it because we have possibility of perception that are, that is incredible, no? Understanding this net along the island, no? Carpenters or, uh, clay manufacturers, bricks or tiles or tiles for the roof, whatever, no? We have lots of them, no? This, this is a hydraulic uh, tile factory that I explained to you before, no? Or people that understand how to work with materials, no? And we have to understand that working together with them, we can come to an end, no? It's impossible to work alone, no? Very precise tools and also to reduce whenever it's possible, no? In this case, it's to reuse a whole building, to restore it, not to build from scratch. In, in fact, we had the possibility of building from scratch, no? This is in front of the sea, in the north side of the island. These are uh, tourist apartments uh, that, that, of course, you can, you can rent, no? Um, the owner is the same that you have seen before, it's uh, Vicens, no? Uh, Vicens is the owner of these apartments and the, and the apartment you have seen in Palma, that is called Can Gabriel, because it's his son, no, not his name, but the name of his son. Then Vicens, uh, it's a clever person, no? And he, they had this, this double property, double building, let's say, a front and a back block, no? That are in front of the sea, this is a port of Can Picafort, no? And it has a back side street, no? And between them, you have this, this pre-existing uh, building. No? In this uh, drawing, what I'm showing is the rooms that were closed somehow, no? the, the more private ones, no? uh, bathrooms and probably services as kitchens, as uh, staircases, no? that were somehow placed in, in a chaotic way, I would say. No? And then the main thing we did is to open up back to the front, not only because of the views, as you can imagine, but also because of bringing this breath across the building, to have this cross ventilation, to have this, um, uh, to, 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 to um, uh, uh, push down the, the, the temperature and to, to uh, cool down the building, you know? Then that's why all the services are placed into, into the sides of it, next to the party walls, making somehow a huge party wall, you know? And understanding this uh, transparency between the front and the back. That is, this is a, one of the plants now where you have, as you see on the sides, you have staircase, toilets, uh, wardrobes, kitchens, uh, more toilets or bathrooms no? on the sides. No? Then defining the central part. No? Then when you do the section through this uh, service area, you find kind of a puzzle, no? trying to um, um, take benefit of every corner. No? But when you cut from the to the center of these of this apartments, you see something very clean. No? This is an area that has been somehow uh, brought into a more calm uh, 
uh, aspect, no, taking account in, to every 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 one of the of the bricks, no. Uh, in this case, we were, as you have seen before, uh, playing with this uh, mm, thermoclay or thermoarthilia, as I explained to you before. And we thought with the sense, okay, we can bring this forward, this family of materials that are coming from the island with this clay from the from the south, you no, know, from Pelanage and uh, Villafranca and surroundings, you no, know, uh, having this family of materials, you no. Know, um, but I explained to you that this was an existing building. Then we just uh, um, isolated, and then we build this inner layer. And of course, when you build just an inner, inner, an inner layer, this brick, when you place it with the holes looking up, uh, can work as a bearing wall, then it can work as an structure. Then also, because of the many cells each brick has, it can work also as isolation. But of course, I think this brick in this position is affirming the position, uh, saying, explaining what it is not doing. No, the brick says, "I am not a structure." You see that I am not a structure, and it's saying, "I am not isolation." You see that because of my position, I am not isolation. I am just a finishing. I am just a dress. I am just the inner layer of this um, um, uh, apartment. No, then all the apartment is kind of organized and built uh, depending on the dimension of these bricks. Then this twenty nine plus one centimeter and nineteen plus one in high. No, but what happens again with this brick with this wonderful Playful and uh, uh, nice uh, pattern that we obtain because of the of the of the brick. No, when you add uh, switches and plugs again. In this case, what we did is to push a bit back the the brick and to plaster over it in order not to um, be over the brick. No, then you obtain these corners. No, this I don't know. That, that's because of the, the strategy we use to build. It's not something aesthetic, but at the end, aesthetic comes and it's fine, no? Uh, then as you see every corner, uh, the, the brick turns and there is no, no piece of brick at, at all, no? Then uh, same materiality, but in this case, tiles, no? Again, understanding that the pavement of tiles has a joint and the joint also wants to be something, no? The joint wants to be present, you no? Know? And different tiles, different bricks, different uh, pavements to show different areas. In this case, the one with the circular holes is showing kind of a carpet to get into one apartment, you no? Know? And this one is a terrace of another apartment, then making the difference. Sometimes the brick, in this playful way, we build kind of the ventilation of certain points or certain rooms or elements, you no? Know? Building plinths or shuckles with this pavement and also with the brick. You now when there is an entrance, you now it's a thicker one, then it's more, um, then this brick also it's playful position to build the, the stair or to build the bench or whatever. You know? Then also to make some, can we say joy, jokes, for example, I don't know, you know? around this pillar, you know? uh, there is some, uh, uh, the, 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 pillar, the column was already there, no? then so how it, it crosses all this pavement, no? and it's kind of a violent situation to have these bloody um, um, uh, tiles around it. No? But sometimes it's not that uh, uh, funny, not that the joke, but understanding that this finishing, if you build a bench, it's easier when it's glazed to be cleaned and to have uh, it cleaned to, to sit on it. No? And sometimes when you get into the bathrooms, no? you, you use Another, another, the same tile, but in another, in another dimension, no? But you use it, glaze it or not, when you have more humidity, more water or less, no? Then in this case, every material has its own place, no? Then again, this, say, poor materials, no? That are at hand, no? This reinforcing concrete bars again to build all the um, metal elements as the, as the handrails 
or some some uh, support for vegetation that right now is um, uh, growing. You no, know? also the shades you no know, are a very simple and common system here that creates this wonderful atmosphere at one point, but also allows the breeze to come through the through the to the apartment when you are doing the siesta in summer. You have the doors open and the um, breeze. Uh, running through the through the apartment and then life, of course. Each one of these um, pieces of furniture has been handmade, you no, know? sometimes taking uh, Enzo Mari's uh, booklet, you no, know, to, to build with our carpenter, some, sometimes with uh, local craftsmen, you no, know? building rock chairs or uh, whatever you can you can imagine. Here you have the transparency to the sea, you no, know, with well. I think wonderful views to the to the north um, of the of the island. You know, these rock chairs, you know, the the hairs, the, the heads, uh, whatever. You know. <clears throat> in this case, we are in, 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 next to the kitchen. You no, know. uh, well, all the materials have its own position. You no. Know giving this, uh, uh, let's say, not common position with common materials. No? Not common look, but with common things, super common, cheap and easy to find. No? His Vicence with Gabriel no? in the terrace no? of the upper apartment. No? Everything is talking about the same, no? the wall, or the shoes are talking about exactly the same. This uh, aspect, hopefully, we will have other opportunities to explain uh, projects that we are developing right now as uh, uh, Joan and uh, Catalina and Joan's home. You know, that talks about this, you know, about what every element wants to be. You know? In this case, something about uh, materials and the respect of each brick. Again, none of these bricks have been cut. In this case, we were using a 30 centimeters brick per 20 and moving each one 10 centimeters. Then we went getting into a corner. We find that we needed pieces of 20 centimeters or 10. In this case, this element and this one is exactly the same. This one and this one is a 10 centimeters thick piece of thermoclay, as you have seen, because it's 20 per 20 per 10. Then depending on how you place it, you get the 20 per 20 or the 10 per 20. Then you have the fitting elements that create this pattern. I don't know if it's beautiful or not. I think yes, but I don't mind. What I mind is that this is and a, a, a solution, a building solution to solve a problem no? or to make things easier somehow. No? Then when you have more corners, more textures appear in this sense. No? But hopefully we have time soon to, to explain the whole project. It's very close to, to finish. Hopefully this Christmas will be done. No? And what happens when we are abroad, when we are in other countries, in other places that we know, don't know that much because somehow we know more or less our island. We have been living here for right now 45 years. <laughs> and I think that what we have is that we look the architecture, the surroundings in the same way. We feel that uh, all this common, popular, ordinary and infraordinary architecture is what minds to us. No? As is written in this book from George Perec, I don't know if you know it, it's called The Infraordinary of the, 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 the Infraordinary, you know, says that, um, starts saying that the, tra the trains do not exist. The everyday train doesn't exist. The train just exists when they derail, when they have an accident. And the more people died in that accident, the more the train exists. The, that will splash the newspaper because that train is the exception. That exception minds to people. And Perez says, and I feel very close to him, 
what what minds to us is the everyday trend, the common things, the everyday life, what is normal, common, popular. No, then these kind of architectures that uh, when we were there in, in Switzerland, no, we were taking photos of these wonderful barns, no, that are probably very common, very popular, using local resources again, no, and we are taking photos of a lot of them, no. And these ones are in our area, no? in, in, the, in our area, I mean, in the area where we built the, the school in, in, in the, that's the, the Canton Fribourg, no? on the north of Lausanne, in between Lausanne and Fribourg. Um, and this was in a quite a small village uh, with individual houses, no, not in between party walls. Um, and the typology we found around there was a typology very compact because of climate needs, of course, not to lose that heat. We have the opposite need to lose and to cool down the building. They want to have a compact shape, no? It was built of uh, um, uh, wood over a stony concrete, basement in order to uh, isolate or to protect the, the wood to root from the humidity coming from the terrain, no? Normally with pitch roof, of course, uh, to take the water out, no? And this simple volume, when you were getting in, was becoming somehow complex, no? This complexity of the space, no? Of the structure, the structure was the main role. This wooden structure was amazing in these uh, buildings, no? And some of them were having a very nice dress, no? This dress made of uh, fish scales, made of wood, these wooden scales, no? And at some point, the metal uh, copper elements appear, no? And that's because they have other uh, resources, no? We have stone, then uh, hygroscopy, then inertia, etc. They have um, forests. They have wood, and that was what we need to to do. No, the same that we are doing. Then repeating again. No? Then, since the project, since the competition, it was a compact building built on a plinth with a wooden uh, a structure, pitch roof, and a dress of certain kind of. Uh, wooden scales. No? These plans are for the competition. Just to explain that at that point, we were already realizing that this, the structure was important. No? Then a plinth made of concrete with these wooden sticks on it that were kind of building the space itself. No? And at the very end, on top of it, the skylight was bringing the light to the center, to the core of the, of the house of the a school, no? This is the plinth, no? Also a model from the competition to understand structure is important, no? And of course, no, just in more detail, no? The, the columns are not in the, where two beams cross, no? Neither the columns are behind the beam, they are next to it, because the column is a column and the beam is the beam again, no? Then this is a primary structure, secondary structure, and this is the scheme, no? The scheme was this kind of svastic um, uh, system, you know, with a main core, this main hole, can be understood, someone said, as a patio also, I don't know, it's a meeting space for the students, for the people going there, for the kids, you no? Know? And the services in between classrooms, services that have this schematic position, but also they help to isolate the sound from one, uh, uh, um, classroom to another, no? Then this is the ground floor where you have these bunkers that they used to have for the, for the wars in, the, in these two positions. Then the technical room and some storage, no? Then in the center, you have a column, one column, no? This column at the ground floor, it's opening into four. Then you have four spaces. One of them is a porch. If you go up, you find the service area that has three legs. One of them is empty, it's a double space, no? but the, the column keeps on going up. No? 
and in the in the part in the in the port you have two columns. No? Then this triple, um, and once again you have a double space on the on the, on the court on the porch, no, and three classrooms, no, and these three legs that the service has on the second floor turned around. Then the empty space right now is here, and the four classrooms underneath the roof, no. With this simple scheme of just changing the position of the double space plus changing, turning the position of this uh, service area, no, we got into somehow this very, um, uh, let's say, simple volume, this squarish, uh, it's a, squ a completely square in plan, but kind of cube, no, this very simple volume, you get into somehow into a complex space. Now you have the double space there in a, in a meeting room, then if you move the section, you find the double space in the in the hall that jumps to the ground floor, then ground floor, first floor, then first floor, second floor, and the skylight. No? Then as you see, this is a triple space. Then the, everything, every time the section changes. And if you imagine transversal, no, you have connection to the different spaces, no? Of course, no. And during the whole time, as you see, elements referred to the structure are the main element that appears in the in the in the building, into in the interior uh, of the building, no. Then the, the outer has this second layer, this dress, no, this um, uh, wooden fish scales covering the building, no, and having somehow this first or perhaps last, the one in the bottom, a scale made of copper, because it's there to protect the wood, of course, no. Someone said that it's um, uh, some uh, ornament, no. Uh, but I don't mind, perhaps it's ornament, but it's a building ornament. It's a constructive ornament. It's, it's neat, no? Uh, uh, the construction process asks for, for, for this, this answer, no? or a certain answer in relation to the snow, humidity, and rooting of the, of the facade, no? This is one of the tests we, we did, looking for different finitions and protections and et cetera of the, of the facade, no? This is the volume on site already, no? fitting the, the position, no? And then we had the opportunity to build somehow um, our first um, um, models, one to 15, sometimes 10, but in this case where, well, when we do a house normally is 10, but in this case where one to 15, um, to understand each one of the elements that are there building the um, space, no? Then the porch we could uh, define the thickness of every one of these vertical wooden bars to have joints that you cannot perfectly see there, no, in between each um, panel, no. This gap there in between the beam and the facade and how this turns down, no. Well, every element is already there with the one to 15, no. It's um, quite, um, um, I think, um, uh, um, um, uh, interesting the, the the size of this of these um, um, uh, models. No, um, then we, we also did. I, I would like to show you the, the model of a, of a, of one of the classrooms. No, hey, sorry, okay. Um, where you see a lot of things. No gaps in between panels and vertical structure. No, that's why these small uh, um, movements of the structure to hold the beams. Then we, we came up into the, the site once finished, no? and we feel that this could be somehow one of these old looking farms, not these old buildings that have already been there. No? And you see that something's new there, no? but it's the repetition of something old that brings you into something new somehow. No? It's this repetition again and again. No? And when we get closer, you see how the snow was there into this first scale, no? Then the circle as a, an element, a geometry that joins bring people together. It's here and also in the empty space of the main space of the, of the uh, hole, no? And there is a nice relation, I think, between these two columns. These are two in the center, there is one. This is a couple in the center, this is an individual. These one are kind of uh, unstable, no? Seems to, to fall down, no, very thick, no, huge, just two meters twenty high, no, 
holding a, a mass of a black building seems very really, uh, heavy, you know? The section or the shape of these uh, scales show how the water drops from the center, as you see here, you know? How it's hanged on the, on the facade and the section, the deformation of these elements show the mm, path for the, for the water to drop out, no? Then when we go in, this double column turns into just one column, not two meters 20, but 12 meters high with a circle, a precise circle to touch the floor, but it's not touching any slab, any concrete slab of the first floor. It seems that this first and second floor are dancing around this, this, this column that is very high, empty, no? You see it's empty in the center, no? And when you, while you go up, you discover interior of the classrooms, no connections and relation in between the different levels because of those sections that were starting from that very simple plan, no. And at the very end, the this column just opens up to hold light, no, pretty nothing, no, and to, of course, to stabilize the the, the roof, no, and all the. The lighting and all the all the elements like the uh, the bells are kind of this uh, mm, well, let's say simple direct and uh, common uh, elements that you can find everywhere. You know, uh, thought and drawn as they are, of course, but kind of taking a step back and understanding that. Probably not this one, but something closer to it could be hanging in a in a in a barn. No, then all these connections between the different uh, classrooms, and then when you go in the classroom, you discover kind of how the precise the model was because, well, most of the details were already there in the in the model. No. I'm pretty uh, done. And I want to jump again with this uh, concept of the uh, infraordinary. Again, to Mallorca, to a local, to a common local, no? Where we feel comfortable with, no? And that's a project we are developing right now. Um, hope to end up the project before Christmas, the project, not the, the, the building. And I will spend you quickly. It's a it's a housing project, you no, know, next to an old uh, factory that begins with this competition. Now it turns into another somehow project. But every project is the same. Then we start with this one. No, it's a, we have this factory. It's built with marais, with these um, uh, uh, blocks of of marais, building pilasters on facade. You no, know, then it's a, a, a facade made of pilasters and and uh, Maris, no? Then what we need to, to build is the name of this factory. Then what we decided is to also to underline this block, uh, this linear position, no? Defining a street as a public space in between, no? Then in this uh, block, we define a typology that is born from uh, two main concepts, no? One is, um, two main climatical concepts no one is the 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 gallery no two sides of gallery facing uh, east and west no uh, working as porches in summer and as collectors sun collectors heating collectors in winter no and the cross ventilation too again no uh, when you have a, a facade that is Cool. The other one is hot, and the opposite. No, then always there is uh, this air blowing from one side to the other. No? Then in in uh, living as as living spaces. No, we also thought on the on the on the central room as a topic. No, uh, to organize and to become much more effective. No. Then each unit is organized around this central room. It's drawn as a, 
as a as a dining room, but I don't mind, no? Uh, how they use it at the end, no? And four services rooms on the sides of this uh, uh, octagonal room at the end, no? Uh, a kitchen, um, ba uh, bathroom, and two stories, no? And then you have the main rooms, no? Bedrooms and living, no? In diagonal, no? Always attaching this extension of the room as a gallery, no? Then the structure will be made of mares on the sides. These galleries will keep this inertia, will have this extra thick space on facade. And then because it's uh, social housing, the inner core will be made of wood to have really fast way of building this inner core, no? And it's where all the facilities are placed, no? Then the outer sides, the outer layer is slowly built, no? But there is no facilities, no finishing, nothing inside of it. Then at the end, probably they will end up at the same time, more or less, no? Then you have the inertia on these sides to into this uh, thick ceiling, thick facade of this element made of local stone, uh, working as um, uh, solar or heating um, uh, um, a space in, in, in winter, no? And as a porch, when you have the shades and opening the, gla the glass, opening the, uh, the, the windows in summer, it will work as a, as a porch, no? As a, a shallow space, no? having this cross ventilation. No? This is one of the of the units no? that was from this core central space with these services on the sides, diagonal relation between the core, and you can walk around, of course, whenever, however you want. No, everything is connected through the galleries. No, and this is the aspect of it. No, next to this one made of pilasters. That's our proposal, kind of having a dialogue between the existing and the new, having perhaps a new way of repeating the old again, you know, with common elements, common roofs made of tiles, common uh, pipes of, with common colors, you know, with this central room, this diagonal in between the rooms. You know? And then here you have the gallery on the right hand, and the central space on the left hand. The space of the gallery covered with this uh, ceiling made of a bowl to have more thickness, more inertia in this side of the building. And I will end again with the same book. It's this uh, local words, no? With another quote, no? Uh, also related with one of our uh, ways we look at this world, you know, where we, where we live, no? It says that, we are where we are, you no? Know? The sentence plays with the verb be, be and the stay, be. Then depending on the place where we are, we have an answer or another. We try to be part of the tradition of that place. We try to bring it forward. We try to use the resources that that place has, you no? Know? What do we have and what can we do with the things we have? And that could be a definition of this, uh, uh, the work we, we try to do uh, with this, uh, Team, no, this is a photo this summer um, of, of Ted Architectus, uh, for which I have been talking from. No, it's not only me, it's uh, all, of, all of them. Uh, and that's all. Huh? Thank you for your patience and your time. Thank you. Wow, Romain, thank you very much for, uh, for your lecture. In the meantime, they switched off the lights in the room from which you are presenting, we see. <laughs> no, it, it, it was because it, I have no light on. Yeah, it okay. was the sun coming, <laughs> but now it's not, no, I'm not yeah. at home. <laughs> so thank you, thank you very much. We, uh, as I understand, we only have a very uh, limited amount of, uh, of, of time um, for some, uh, for some uh, questions. So if anybody has, a, has an urgent question, please, Drop it in the in the Q and A so we can uh, we can have a look at that and, and see if there is a, a minute or two for for Kome to to react. Um, in the meantime, I think wow, uh, what a what a generous uh, lecture that you uh, that you gave um, that you 
focused on, on, on how things are made and also how you work with so how, um, seeing opportunities for design, seeing opportunities for craftsmanship, seeing opportunities for spatial qualities, material qualities, mm -hmm. when there is a technical question that arises. I think that is that is really um, rewarding and very inspiring to to see. I think also mm -hmm. uh, the way you work with a relationship between a materials property and and opportunity and um, give that, as you said a couple of times, some uh, autonomy in 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 an architecture project is really. Uh, beautiful to uh, to see. Um, I don't know if there are some some questions. Probably, as you know, we dine a bit earlier than in uh, southern of <laughs> Europe, so probably a lot of our uh, audience is uh, is hungry by uh, uh, by now. Everything was clear. Everything was clear. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> yeah, at least that was uh, that was the case. So, if if there are no uh, questions, then it. Uh, I just want to thank you again very much for, me for, uh, for your generous lecture and the time pleasure, that, uh, you spent with us tonight. I would like to invite the audience to keep an eye on our uh, media and social media for upcoming lectures. We are still busy forming the program uh, for the next uh, weeks and you will be informed through emails and posting on other media. In the meantime, there are some uh, very big thank yous uh, popping up in the chat, uh, Jome. So while we close the session question. and um, ask everybody to uh, leave and go uh, other way. So thank you again, Jome. Okay. Thank you, and Thomas. It has been a you. pleasure. Let's keep in touch and hope to meet you, some of you uh, in, in, in Belgium soon, probably. Well, uh, in the in the first service in the in the church, uh, super. You are really invited. That would be really, <laughs> really nice. Keep us posted. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks.